Greetings, students of mine. I hope this video lecture finds you all doing well. Uh, today, we're going to spend some time looking at policy analysis and the framework. And so, I want to spend some time today because the bulk of what you'll be doing in this class in terms of the research, in terms of working on your final project, will really center around this particular uh, presentation that we're doing today. So um, you will find a copy of this particular um, PowerPoint in your um, Brightspace shell. But what I wanted to do today was to walk through this with you. Uh, so uh, you'll have a better understanding of how to apply it and how it works. So I did something a little different. So I added um, an actual bill and we'll just kind of walk through the presentation so you'll get a chance to see what we're going to be looking for from you in terms of the research that you're doing as you're moving forward with this particular project. All right, so when we look at the framework here uh, coming from our authors, you can see that a policy analysis really is broken into four fairly significant major components. <clears throat> we're looking at the historical background of the policy. So in other words, why do we need to be doing this in the first place? There's obviously some things that have occurred uh, within the context of our society that may drive the need for this particular uh, type of social uh, welfare intervention, as well as then also exploring what problems necessitate the, the, the issuance of this particular policy doing a policy description in terms of like, what are we gonna actually try to accomplish? And then also looking at the policy analysis, the policy goals, and then also looking at the political, economic, and administrative feasibility of this particular policy that we're putting in place. So this is typically what happens uh, when major policy, especially at the federal level, and oftentimes at the state level, is passed, that we look at uh, the issues that are driving what's actually taking place, all right? So now what I have included is, um, and you'll be seeing this slide from time to time throughout this particular presentation. And basically we have HR Bill, HR 3434, which is the Adoption Assistance and Child Welfare Act of 1980. Um, I chose this particular um, bill to use as an example to look at some things that might come up as you're looking at doing your policy analysis. So if you've kind of followed this guideline, it will make it a little bit easier for you as you're starting to put together uh, what you want to do. So I'll just kind of briefly review this. <clears throat> so working, and I have worked for many, many years in child protection, so I'm very familiar uh, with this legislation uh, and what it actually does. So these are the five tenets that are laid out here in terms of what this particular bill, this policy piece was designed originally to do. And that was to make reasonable efforts to prevent uh, children from being removed from their homes and to make it possible for them to turn. So as you may be aware uh, that child protection exists in all 50 states. Uh, it's often administered either at the state or the county level and it's designed, it's a federally funded mechanism that looks at how do we protect and, you know, the safety and well-being of the children in our society. So um, that's where this particular law is kind of coming from. It also recognizes that there will be times uh, when we start to look at uh, designing improvements for funding uh, and services for foster care and special needs in children who are needy and dependent. So, you know, special needs kids, kids who have to be removed from the care of their parents because of all kinds of issues that are in foster care, someone needs to be paying for those children staying there. So this particular bill authorizes also uh, foster care payments to foster care providers for to cover the cost of food, shelter, daily support. So all of the things that people need when they're living uh, in a home, foster care literally pays for. Um, they put some stipulations in place also, though. But there's a voluntary placement agreement, so parents have whatever issues that they're experiencing. They aren't in a position to take care of their kids. They're working to try to um, improve their situation so they can have their kids return to them. They can sign a voluntary placement agreement uh, with a county or state entity and have their children placed in foster care with the right to have visits, but for them to actually be somewhere else while families are working on the issues that they might be working on. So it could be recovering from drug addiction, it could be um, having been incarcerated and not in a place to actually take care of your kids for a period of time. So it covers a number of different things as well. 
and then also provides coverage for children up to age 18. So as children get to age 18, they age out of our system. Um, and then they're also utilizing Social Security type benefits as well as AFDC, uh, Aid for Dep Dependent Children, payments to actually help offset the cost when uh, kids are actually living with relatives. So sometimes grandma will pick the kids up uh, because, you know, mom is not in a position or dad is not in a position to take care of the kids to keep them tied to the family. And in those instances, uh, they're able to apply for county assistance to actually pay for taking care of those kids. So that's kind of a snapshot of the bill in and of itself. And so as we move forward here and we start to look at the policy analysis, uh, there we go. So going back to piece one. So if we think about the bill that just, we just talked about. So obviously there had to have been some historical problems that led to the creation of this policy. So either kids were not adequately provided for while they were in care. Um, there were probably limited provisions for what parents needed to do to get kids back. So this particular act also required that child protection agencies and entities develop what's called a case plan or a treatment plan with specific goals and activities that parents and kids need to be involved in uh, to restore this family to a state of normal functioning and to have these children return home. So this particular act placed all those things in place put all of those particular requirements in place. So again, before this particular act could have been developed in 1980, there had to be some issues or some investigation that was brought to people's attention regarding how these problems have been handled in the past, um, what's the, you know, what's the original time change, what legislative history for this policy. So again, when we start to think about you doing your particular policy analysis, these are the things that you're going to need to do uh, in terms of looking at the historical background for why this particular policy is in place. All right, so again, as I said, this slide would pop up a lot during this particular presentation. We'll just kind of let this be a segue into the next piece. So as we start to think about uh, description of the problems and necessitates this policy, so what's the nature of this problem? So basically, how many kids are there in the United States in the early 70s and early 80s that were in need of out-of-home placement for child protection reasons or special needs reasons, or there were children just who were poor? How widespread was it? You know, so now we're thinking about probably several hundred thousand, if not millions of kids uh, growing up across this country in some of those situations. Uh, so you, there's research that really looks at, you know, we need to do something at a national level because these are the number of kids who are affected by this on a daily basis. How is it effective? What are the causes of the problems kind of a thing? So again, when we look at um, really trying to understand and do a deeper analysis, we've got to be able to understand this, this particular piece. So when you choose your particular policy that you're going to be looking at, are you going to be able to, to need to be able to do some investigation and research in terms of getting a sense of how widespread the problem was or is? Again, same slide as we move towards the policy description. So now we need to be able to look at, so how is this policy described? Uh, how is it expected to work? Who's going to do what? And so, um, for example, this particular bill appropriated tax dollars uh, to the tune of several hundred millions of dollars that were to be dispersed to states with the understanding that they had to provide these particular services and provide proof and evaluation of those particular services. Um, what resources and opportunities um, is the policy expected to provide? So it's going to provide payment so that we can keep kids safe while parents are resolving the issues that brought them into the system in the first place. Uh, who will be covered? You know, kids from zero to 18. Um, how will the policy be implemented? It can be implemented in a couple of different ways. So um, there are some states that are state administered. So the entire state um, has rules and regulations in place for how and when kids go into home placement, what the foster care rules are, the whole nine yards. And then there are states like Minnesota, which is state led, but county driven. So then the individual counties have the same discretion to make those particular rules as it relates to their particular county. 
So it can get a little bit convoluted, but really understanding how that piece works. Uh, what are the formal and informal criteria that will be used to determine the effectiveness? So obviously, you know, if we have um, fewer kids going into out-of-home placement or into out-of-home care or having shorter stays, then that's going to be better for the children from a psychological and emotional standpoint, as well as it's going to be uh, financially more cost-effective as well. Um, if we can resolve situations and get children back at home in six months as opposed to having them in the system for a year or more, then it's going to be a cost savings for the system. Um, the administrative auspices in which the policy will be lost, law, there are rules, regulations, and bulletins that um, the state puts out that talks about specifically how you do these particular things, the steps that you're going to need to be involved in, and then what agencies or organizations will be overseeing and evaluating coordinating the policy. So you've got uh, your county social service agencies that understand uh, the full description of law um, and what needs to be done. Um, there are also evaluators that are put into place um, that are actually oversee programs to make sure that they're running effectively. Uh, we often have to report back to the federal government um, on, I'm not sure what the time frame is, annual or every three years or so, just to kind of talk about numbers, what worked, what we did, how much we spent, what were the outcomes, those kind of things in terms of um, that policy description. So again, just keeping those things in mind when you're thinking about your policy, these are things you're going to need to be able to look at. Once again, the Adoption uh, Assistance and Child Welfare Act of 1980. And then if we start to look into the policy analysis. So what are the policy's legal goals? So um, what is the, the Adoption Child Care Assistance Act of 1980 designed to do? Um, you know, what is it, what's the intent? Um, what's the purpose? When we think about are the policy goals just and democratic, is it done fairly? You know, does it inadvertently discriminate against some folks or create other situations um, that are prob more problematic? Um, do the goals of policy contribute to a greater social equality? You know, and so I would con argue that mm, probably if I got kids who are growing up poor in abusive households and we can take them out of those particular households, provide the resources and services to help the family make the change that it needs to be, then in the end we will probably have a better product in terms of a responsible citizens growing up um, despite the trauma that they may experience and be contributing members to society. So it, thinking about that and then there will be numbers to actually either follow that information up or to disprove that. Um, do the goals of the policy policy positively uh, affect income redistribution rights, entitlements, rewards, opportunity, and status? So these are the things that you're going to be looking at when you are doing your analysis of your particular policy. Does it do these things or does it not do these things? Was it even intended to do these things? Uh, do the goals of the policy, policy contribute to a better quality of life for the target population? Those are things that we need to know. Will the goals adversely affect the quality of life for the target population? So while we have this wonderful um, piece of legislation that looks at doing and paying for services to keep kids safe, is there groups of people that this does not work for um, in terms of will it affect the quality of life of that population in a more in adverse way? And if so, what are those ways that it would do that? Uh, does the policy contribute to the positive relations, social positive relationship between target population and overall society? Um, you know, on the surface, based on what the intent of this particular bill is, you know, you could actually say yes. But of course, you're going to need to be able to demonstrate that uh, by doing some research to actually take a look at what were the outcomes in terms of uh, whether it made a difference for a significant number of kids. Because remember, we've got hundreds of thousands, if not millions of kids in the system uh, that are either benefiting or being hurt by this particular policy. Uh, and then finally, are the goals uh, consistent with social work professional values? So these are the things that you're going to need to look at. So hopefully that is a helpful piece, and I know it's pretty brief, um, and you'll be doing quite a bit more research in terms of your efforts, in terms of the policies that you're looking at. But that's just kind of an idea, a synopsis of what it might look like in real time. And so, again, this is going to be um, the crux of what you will be doing in this particular class. You'll be doing the research on the policy that you actually choose 
uh, to actually do some investigation on. It's going to take quite a bit of time, uh, which is why we have the assignment broken up the way that we do, uh, which we will have covered in the actual syllabus. So make sure that you do your class readings. Um, and, you know, if there are questions that you have, please jot them down. And then we will actually uh, spend some time in one of our upcoming Zoom labs uh, that happen bi-weekly to kind of talk about what concerns or questions that you may have. So good luck to you all as you move forward.